Throughout the 1750s, tensions would arise between the European powers of Great Britain and France for control of America. At this time, the French RA controlled Canada and the Great Lakes region, while Great Britain's 13 colonies had an iron hold on the East Coast. Both superpowers fought to get a foothold in one of the most contested regions of North America, the Ohio Country. There was great necessity for both nations to gain control of this area. For the French, they would be capable of building a string of outposts through it, linking their forts in Canada with their Louisiana colony, preventing Britain from ever expanding westward. Both France and Britain set their sights on a strategic river junction called the Forks of the Ohio, because for those who controlled the Forks, controlled all of the Ohio country. During the 1750s, the region was controlled by the Iroquois Confederacy. It was made up of the six Native American tribes that were forced into the Ohio country because of British colonization. In the spring of 1752, Virginian speculators would negotiate with the Mingo Indians that controlled the Forks. Eventually, the Virginians would receive permission from the Mingo leader, Half King Tanagrisson, to build a small train post at the Forks. The Half King had finally decided to take the side of the English over the French in the conflict of who would control America. In the year 1753, news that the French had begun building forts in the Ohio country reached the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, Robert Dinwiddie. On October 31st, Dinwiddie would write a letter to the French demanding the withdrawal of their forces, writing, quote, The lands upon the River Ohio and the western parts of the colony of Virginia are for notoriously known to be the property of the Crown of Great Britain, end quote. An expedition would be sent to deliver the letter to the French, led by 22-year-old George Washington. In the middle of the coming month, George Washington would lead the small expeditionary force of nine past the Forks of the Ohio to Fort LaBeouf. After traveling for days, Washington would come across a French outpost. He would be invited to dine with the French soldiers. During the meal, because of free-flowing wine, a French officer would tell Washington, quote, it was their absolute design to take possession of the Ohio, and by God they would do it. End quote. Following the dinner at the French outpost, Washington and his men continued on for four days until they saw the wooden walls of Fort LaBeouf. After meeting with the commander of the fort, Jacques Lagarde de Saint Pierre, Washington would give him Dinwiddie's letter. After three days of careful thought, Saint Pierre decided to send the letter to the French governor of New France. Marquis Duquesne, and stay at his post while he awaited new orders. Completing his mission, George Washington would return to Virginia. Washington's report of his failed expedition to persuade the French to leave the Ohio Valley reached all the way to London and King George II. The king would send a letter authorizing the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia that if anyone tries to erect any forts in the province of Virginia, to try and remove them peacefully. But if they don't go peacefully, he says, quote, We do hereby strictly charge and command you to drive them off of force of arms. End quote. The following spring of 1754, the Virginians began constructing their small train posts that they were given permission to build on the forks of the Ohio. Almost immediately when construction began, French troops forced the Virginians to abandon the forks. By taking the forks, the French have humiliated the half-king and made him look like he was supporting the losing side. Learning of the continued actions of the French in the Ohio country, Dinwiddie created the Virginia Regiment, with English gentleman Joshua Fry as their colonel and George Washington as the second command, and sent them off to the frontier to combat the French. While Colonel Fry and half of the regiment were getting organized and preparing to march in Alexandria, Washington would push forward with the rest of the regiment to Wills Creek to set up a base of operation. Earlier that year, Washington sent Captain William Trent and a group of backwoodsmen to build a fort at the Forks. Washington hoped that Trent would be able to fortify the position before the arrival of the French, and eventually the rest of the regiment would join him in help. Fortifications would fail when on April 17, 1754, 500 French soldiers under the command of Captain Claude Pierre Bucadet 
ordered the surrender of the 40 men constructing the fort. The French would take over the site and begin building an even larger fort. It would be named Fort Duquesne. Once the news of the French's assault reached George Washington, he ordered his men to continue marching in hopes of reaching and setting up a defensive position along Redstone Creek. While awaiting Colonel Fry and the rest of the regiment, George Washington and some native allies would encamp at an area known as the Great Meadows. During the evening of March 27, 1754, a runner from the Half King tells Washington that they believe they found where French troops are camping. Fearing an attack on his camp, Washington ordered a majority of his men to defend the camp and took an estimated 40 soldiers with him to link up with the Half King. He held counsel with, with Tanner Grissom and his warriors, and it was agreed that Washington's native allies would lead him to the French camp. After following their native trackers through the night, Washington's men and the Half King's warriors reached the French camp on the morning of March 28, 1754. The details of the battle are convoluted, but by Washington's own accounts, as soon as the French spotted the advancing British, they immediately went for their weapons. Wasting no time to respond, George Washington ordered his own men to return fire. According to French accounts, though, the French camp had no knowledge of the advancing British troops, and they claimed that George Washington ordered his men to fire first. In total, the battle would last 10-15 to 15 minutes before the French surrendered. The English suffered one casualty and two wounded, whereas the French suffered 12-14 to 14 casualties and had several wounded soldiers, including their commander, Ensign Joseph Colon de Jomonville. Jomonville would tell George Washington that his men were a diplomatic delegation and that he was under the orders of Captain Pacadé to give a written summons to any English he found, ordering their withdrawal from the King of France's land. It's believed that after Jomonville finished talking, the half-king approached him, saying, quote, You are not yet dead, my father. End quote. He would then kill and scalp him in revenge for the humiliation of the French caused him. Legend has it that once Jomonville was dead, the Half-King washed his hands in the man's brains. Following this, the Half-King's warriors would scalp the remaining dead and wounded French, all while a stunned Washington could only watch in silence. The Indians would later send the scalps to other natives in the Ohio country, telling them to take up their hatchets in support of the English. Realizing the gravity of the situation, George Washington begins to prepare for the French retribution. In the following episode, we'll discuss the French's revenge on George Washington at the Battle of Fort Necessity and how this event decided who would control North America.